Smarties, we are frequently asked by parents, do I need an educational therapist or do I just need a tutor? Today, we answer this question in depth, digging into the nuances of both, the differences, and if it's more appropriate to hire a tutor. We also discuss what an appropriate educational therapist and tutoring partnership looks like. If you are interested in hiring an educational therapist and not a tutor, go ahead and sign up for a phone call on our websites, www.myedtherapist.com or www.capedtherapy.com. Let's stick it. You want to learn faster, but sometimes working harder is just not the answer. You have to learn smarter. The Educational Therapy Podcast. Hi, Smarties. Welcome to episode 287 of Learn Smarter, the Educational Therapy Podcast. I'm Stephanie Pitts. And I'm Rachel Kapp. And today we are talking about if you need an educational therapist or if you need a tutor. And this is a really big topic of conversation lately. Yep. So even though we have done 287 podcast episodes, this question is still popping up in our practices because, of course, not everybody who calls our practice, believe it or not, has listened or heard of the podcast. And some people calling the practice are calling because a friend or a referral came in from a neuropsychologist or a therapist or somebody who had prior knowledge of us, and they are just following the recommendation, but they really don't know much about it. And so we thought it is time to have this conversation again with our audience and kind of dig into the differences and help people sort of figure out what they actually need for their next best step. Agreed. And I think this is a topic that's coming up constantly. Parents are saying, you know, we've been doing tutoring multiple times a week and the student is still not doing very well in school or failing tests or is over reliant on the tutor. Yep. And so if you have a learner straight up who is with the tutor multiple days a week, that's a opportunity to explore more and get more curious about why that is something that they feel helps them or you as a larger family feel supports your larger family goals. So why do people get confused on this topic? So I think there's a real difference in understanding if this is content-related struggles or if it's the actual part of schooling and learning and studying and all of that that they're struggling with. Mm -hmm. So let's say the main difference is if you are struggling, if your student is struggling with content, that means not understanding how to do something like fractions or algebra two or some sort of high math. And they need to have somebody explain literally in depth, do this, 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 and this, and they can't plug in and do it themselves and are still getting it wrong. This is content. This is them not understanding what the math is, for instance. Another example would be the reasons, the causes of the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Like that is a content related question. If they're confused about something or they need some clarification around that topic, where we are different Mm -hmm. is if overall the learner is struggling with acquiring knowledge and needs a ton of support to just get through, that is where we step in and we start helping them learn the way that they learn best. Mm -hmm. What else would you add, Steph? I would say, okay, let's talk about this in terms of that civil war, right, that you're looking at. So content being taught the facts, right? We are looking at how they're approaching learning those facts. We are talking to them about how they're keeping track of those facts, We are talking to them about how they're studying those facts and then how they can do well on a test on those facts. The reason that people get confused about the difference is because structurally it can look the same. Yeah. You're hiring somebody. It's one on one. It's for a set amount of time. There's a weekly routine to it typically. And so that element of it on the whole, look similar to tutoring, right? Yeah. 
Steph, when is it more appropriate to hire a tutor? So it's more appropriate to hire a tutor if you are looking for your learner to do something that is highly specific in one subject area, Mm -hmm. for instance. And we're talking high school in particular. We're talking somebody that teaches chemistry. That is an appropriate referral for tutoring because I'm not a chemistry teacher and I don't know how to do those things. I don't remember. And also I didn't do well in chemistry, (laughs) which is why I picked that subject to talk about. So that is an appropriate time to use a tutor, honestly, because they understand the content and they can pre-teach some of that content to help for the future. And also they can help fill in the gaps of them not understanding some of the foundations of how to do things in chemistry. When we're talking about younger learners, there's a lot of confusion about what a tutor should do with a younger student. And there's a lot of people that hire tutors to help with reading. And there's tutors that just help with school in general, that that's what they're looking for. When it's more generalized, they're just not doing well in school. That is an educational therapist. Mm -hmm. When motivation is lacking, that's an educational therapist. When the goal is independence and autonomy and learning school and life Mm -hmm. and not just subject area support, that is educational therapy. The way the relationship ends also is really different between a content tutor and an educational therapist. An educational therapist is looking to graduate the learner out. We want them to become independent and autonomous. We're trying to work our way out of a job here and not be a part of this team anymore, not be part of the equation anymore. Yeah. Whereas the relationship often ends with a tutor when the class is over. Yeah, when the school year ends. Yeah. When the school year ends. And the way that success is measured between an educational therapist and a tutor is also very, very different. Do you want to talk about how we measure success? Yeah. So let's talk about with a tutor, it's going to really be grade focused. Right. And that's it. And I want to talk about how we've been sitting there saying independent and autonomous learners. Yeah. That is our goal. What does that really look like? That really looks like, depending on the age of the learner, that really looks like they come home, they get started on their homework, when it's an appropriate time, they complete their homework in an appropriate amount of time. They're doing well on making sure that they have all the things that they need and taking them to school. They're doing well on tests and things like that. We're looking for moments where when they don't know what to do, they know how to figure out what to do. That is being independent and autonomous. The other flip side is that if you have been working with a tutor that is content related and your student is not struggling with the actual content, what does that look like at home? It's looking like fights over homework. It's looking like fights over grades. It's looking like the parent-child relationship is very strained. It's looking like the parent is being the executive functioning for the child meaning making sure they have everything, packing up their backpack for them, making sure that when they don't have that book and they call that the parent is going and dropping it off or whatever that is. Those are looking at the whole picture. And that's what we do as educational therapists, looking at the whole child, the whole learner, the whole picture. We also really should dig into this idea of helpfulness versus helplessness. So Mm -hmm. that is both a mindset and a way of supporting the learner. So we are looking as educational therapists to be helpful and really for them to be helpful with their own learning and with their deep and profound understanding of who they are as learners. And what that means in actuality is when we come to session, we fully expect that the learner will have at least 
started for most kids, the project that they are ultimately going to have questions about. We want to see them taking actionable steps as opposed to helplessness where learners, and by the way, this happens in ed therapy too, and we have to correct them as well. But helplessness is waiting for us to even create the Google Doc. Yeah, yeah. Or pull out the assignment or organize themselves. Like we don't want them waiting for us to do what they know we're going to ask them ultimately to do. So if you have a learner who is like, I have math homework, but I'm just going to wait till 430 when Susie shows up to help me, Mm -hmm. that's not what we're looking for because that is a helplessness mindset. Yeah. And I want to clarify a little bit that not all learners come into educational therapy being able to know what they need to do or starting things, right? Of course. Oftentimes, getting started is why they're here. Right. So a lot of learners, that's why they come to us because they don't know how to do it without their tutor. And the whole point is teaching them how to do it. And like we say all the time, does the student know what they need to do Do they understand the assignment? Do they know how to do the assignment? And that is really looking at helping them learn how to do those things so that they can be independent and not being helpless. Who do they need to ask? How are they going to ask? When are they going to ask? When we are working with tutors on the team, they are following the steps and the guidelines that we as the educational therapists have sort of laid out. So if there are systems that we want these learners to hit every single time they're working with an adult, we want that consistency across the board. So that partnership is really, really important. And that's when you have the conversation with your educational therapist about what does tutoring look like for that individual learner? Because obviously everything is not the same for every kid. Every circumstance is different. Mm -hmm. Every circumstance is different and depending on their age and what's going on. But also I want to say nothing against tutors, but the goal is oftentimes when I'm having phone calls and I'm hearing that some of these students have tutoring two to four times a week is once they begin educational therapy, it's helping them back off the tutoring. That is a goal. And then ultimately backing off from working with us. Mm -hmm. It's a step-by-step process. But I think it's really important to note if you are a parent listening and you have a learner that is getting tutoring multiple times a week and it's not working, we have to get curious as to why. Because is it really content? Do they really not understand what the reasons for the Civil War were? Do they not actually understand that the things happened? Or do they not understand the math that is high level? Sure, that's completely possible. But most times when we get calls because tutoring isn't working, it's not because it's content. Mm -hmm. We're off in that last call, right? And there's a reason we're the last because... Things improve as a result of good and quality educational therapy intervention for our practices or other educational therapists or colleagues. Yeah, I think this is a really good conversation. I know that I'm having it constantly. Mm -hmm. I know parents are feeling like I'm spending all this money on tutoring and nothing is working. And the whole important thing that we believe, and we're going to get into this in a future episode, but... We believe if they can, they will. And so getting curious and looking at what is really going on, is it the content or is it the bigger picture? If it's the bigger picture, that's what we're here for. Learning how to school. Learning how to learn. Yeah. Which was a plan B title for the podcast. It was. Yeah, back in the day. So we are looking forward to supporting you and the learners in your life. So if you're interested, don't hesitate to sign up for a phone call. All that information is in the show notes and have a great week, Smarties. Have a great week.